All right, it's time we uh, test the 115 on our transient generator here. Again, we'll just be running this through all the same tests that we have our previous meters. We're going to start with 1 kV. This will be 100 microsecond full with half height, 2 ohm source impedance. And again, we'll run positive and negative transients with each mode of the meter. And then we'll perform a functional test. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we'll go ahead and functional test this. Alright, loop 115 passed at 1000 volts. For the next test, we're going to be running 1.5 kV. Okay, we'll go ahead and functional test it. Alright, the 115 passed the 1.5 kV test. This will be 2 kV. Okay, we'll functional test it. Looks like it passed the uh, 2 kV test just fine. This next test will be at 2.5 kV. If you're kind of curious what this looks like. So the top is the time. So the generator's been on for 1 hour, 17 minutes, and 12 seconds. The bias voltage is basically off at 6 volts, and it's not drawing any current. And the bank voltage is currently about 600 volts, and no cycles. So if I go ahead and we'll turn this thing on, you'll see the cycle count will go to 5. The bank will charge. You can see it discharges. Charges to roughly uh, 2.5 kV. Then it'll do the discharge. Okay, we'll go ahead and functional test it. Okay, so it survived 2.5 kV. Up next, 3 kV. Alright, that completes the 3 kV test. We'll go ahead and functional test it. Alright, the meter passed functional test. We'll go on. This is uh, 4 kV. Okay, we'll go ahead and functional test. Okay, yeah, it was 4 kV, it passed just fine. This will be 5,000 volts. Alright, that's the end of it. We'll go ahead and functional test. Okay, it survived 5 kV. This will be with the new generator set at its max settings. It's roughly 5.9 kV.
That's it. We'll go ahead and functional test. So that's all the testing I can do with this generator. Other than the problems that I saw during the ESD testing, this meter has not had too much of a problem. I do notice that so when the meter is set to capacitance mode and I give it a transient, quite often it'll switch back to diode mode. It's like the meter will reset. Other than that, I have not seen any problems with this meter. So it's held up very well so far. I think uh, what we're going to do is run it on the old generator and let's uh, continue testing it. Okay, we're getting ready to run the next set of tests. I've got the old generator out. Again, this generator has been revamped. So you have to take the cover off and restrap it, but it's a lot more convenient than what I was doing with it. Last time I'd used this was on the 17B Plus. I thought I'd show you the waveform off of it. So you can see here we're looking at uh, 5 thousand volts per division and this is 50 microseconds per division you can see we're two divisions up or roughly 10,000 volts and we can see the full width half height is roughly 50 microseconds and again the reason I'm using the 50 microsecond full width half height is because that basically conforms to the IEC standard so this would allow you to go out and purchase a generator that could actually reproduce these tests of course this generator does not output the energy levels that a standard IEC generator would. This generator will only put out maybe 20 joules at the top end. So it's nothing like what uh, a real surge generator is going to be putting out. So yeah, this is what took out the 17B+. I'll dial this thing back down for 6KV and then we'll go ahead and start the test. So the box has been restrapped for 6KV. I was going to mention too, there is a second strap on there for the full width half height. You may remember on my initial testing of the Fluke 101, I had taken that meter all the way to 13 kV with a full width half height of 100 microseconds. Uh, this generator is still capable of putting that signal out, so the output coupling network is strappable for that. So again, this will be 6,000 volts, 50 microsecond full width half height, 2 ohm source impedance, both positive and negative transients, all modes in the meter. Okay, that's it. We'll go ahead and functional test it. And if it's all right, we'll restrap the generator for 8 kV. All right, no problems at all. Survive 6 kV. I've restrapped the generator for 8. Okay, that's it. We'll go ahead and functional test it, see if it still works. Okay, the 115 passed the 8KV test. We're now on to the 10KV. So just as a reminder, 10KV is where the 17B Plus failed. It took out an op amp and uh, I since replaced that, so the meter does work fine now. Very few meters that I've ran have passed this level of test. As a matter of fact, uh, the 107 and the 101 are the only two. So we'll see if the uh, 115 will join those two. And if you want to see what this looks like here. Yeah, it's 5 kV. Again, 50 microsecond full width half height.
Okay, we'll go ahead and check it out. Here we can see we're at 5,000 volts per division and still 50 microseconds per division. This will be our next transient. It's roughly uh, 12,000 volts. And you can see it's roughly a uh, 50 microsecond full with half height. Alright, <clears throat> again, five transients, positive and negative. Okay. Let's just do some basic tests here. It's just with our transformer. This is roughly uh, 14 and a half volts. Looks fine. It's our DC source. Looks good. Looks fine. I have to test all this offline, but that's a 10 meg, 1, 100k, 10, 1k, 150, 1. It's good. Continuity. Diode check. One diode, two, three in series. There's a point one, one microfarad, and a ten microfarad. Yep, so meter looks fine. I'll go ahead and test the millivolt ranges and make sure all that works. Okay, so the Fluke 115 passes this test. I don't see anything wrong in any of the ranges. It looks good. So again, that was 12,000 volts with a 50 microsecond full width half height using a 2 ohm source impedance. There's only two other meters that have survived that test and that's the Fluke 107 and the Fluke 101. Uh, this Fluke 17B Plus came close. Unfortunately it took out the op amp when I ran the test. The one thing I didn't like about this 115 is the fact that it hung up when I was doing that static discharge test. You know I never saw this happen again during all of my testing. I'm not sure what caused that. It's almost like the main controller chip latched up or something. I suspect that this probably uses different circuitry to look at this continuity mode and that's the reason that the beep worked but the actual display did not. And I think you know just actually power cycling this thing is what shook it loose. It's a little hard to prove. I basically had repeated the static test and that problem didn't show up again. I can't prove that cycling the power caused it to reset but uh, yeah, definitely something, something about this meter. I think there's some kind of a cork there. Other than that, the meter has held up very well. You know, it's right there with the 101, and it's got a lot of features compared to that 101. And price-wise, it's really not that bad. You know, it's not that much more than the 107. When we compare it with 5KY's Fluke 107, the 107 was a 108 dollars meter versus 132 when you look at the difference in the price of these versus the features you get you know these are both 6,000 count meters again RMS not bar graph none you know I think you just gotta pick what it is that you're looking for if you're just looking at sine waves or maybe just DC voltages maybe this 107 is a better pick these are both again very robust meters the 115 is a 6,000 count meter. The 17B Plus is a 4,000 count meter. The 115 is true RMS. The 17B Plus is not. This has a, the 115 has a bar graph feature. The 17B Plus does not. 
So the advantage that you're getting with this 17B Plus is really that you can measure down into the microamps and milliamp ranges and the 17B Plus also has a temperature input. So the cost of the 115 is $132 versus the 17B Plus at $156. But again, you know, 220 bucks will net you this Bryman BM869S and again dual temperature inputs true RMS AC plus DC microamps milliamps pretty much you name it this thing's got it way higher resolution it's way more accurate although the Bryman failed at a lot lower voltages than these it's still you know it's very high up in the ranking cost difference between these meters and this in my opinion it's just not that much if you're looking for a better meter this is my final test results for the 115 again it passed the PZO grill igniter I connected it to a 600 volt DC signal it survived that I did a rectified 220 volt signal it survives that and then we ran 1 kV 1.5 2 2.5 all the way up to uh, the top end of the generator at uh, 5.9 kV here and then I continued testing with the old generator at uh, 6, 8, 10, and 12 kV. And it survived every one of those tests. So it's right on par with the 101. Again, probably on par with like the 107 here. I guess if we wanted to try to damage these two meters, we'd probably have to look back at the 107 and what it took to damage it. You know, that was 100 microsecond full width half height. It's somewhere over 14,000 volts. So these, uh, yeah, these last flukes are pretty bulletproof. Again, this was the 17B+. Plus. It's a shame it uh, couldn't survive that last bit of testing, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry, uh, nothing really gave out. Sometimes that's how it goes, you know, on these robust meters.